Genius Kids. Cultivating love for learning. Lesson 13. Government. Knowledge acquisition. Why do we need a government? We all live in very large country. India is a group of several states and union territories and that is why it is known as the Indian Union. It is like a very huge family but with family members from different religions, castes, languages, etc. living in different parts of the house. India has common borders with many neighboring countries, big and small. The people of our country engage themselves in various types of commercial activities like agriculture, manufacturing, trade and commerce. Every part of the country is linked together by transport and communication network through railways, roadways, airways and communication connections. Farmers grow food for us while the army defends our borders from the enemies. Industries manufacture a huge range of goods, while shops and retail chains see to the sales and marketing part. But they all work in a team, under the supervision of the government. The name of that managing body is the government. It can make decisions and get things done. Each citizen cannot individually participate in decision-making for such larger areas as the country's defense, economic measures, or education policy. These things are carried out by a separate body under the guidance of the central government. The government is an organization or agency through which a political system exercises its authority, regulates public policy, and administers its subjects. In a modern society, Government plays a crucial role in every field of life. Government has to oversee many activities, such as the welfare of citizens of all kinds, running postal and railway services, minting coins, maintaining law and order, rushing assistance to people in case of a natural disaster, etc. The government does these things on behalf of the people by providing leadership to the country making decisions and implementing them in the best interests of all citizens. Levels of Government India is very vast country. It has 28 states and 8 union territories. Some of its states are larger than many European countries. The government works at different levels to govern the entire country efficiently. Different areas have different social and economic backgrounds and so their needs and goals are also different. Proper development of such widely different regions is not possible if a centralized authority has all the decision-making power. Therefore, for administrative efficiency and successful working of development programs, three-tier arrangements have been made at which the government works. These levels are local level, at village, state level and at the national level. The local level covers villages and towns, the state level covers an entire state that is UP, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh etc. and the national level relates to the entire country. Laws and the Government The government performs various functions. It makes laws and ensures that they are followed. The central government represents the whole country. It is through its government that a state makes laws and enforces these laws. Therefore, citizens of a country have to follow the laws made by the government. The government always makes law keeping the best interest of the people in view. For instance, if you want to drive a vehicle, you need a driving license. It is the law. Laws are made by the government and executed by their different agencies. The police system, which sees to it that people are driving with a valid license, is a government agency. Government is organized into many public offices, all of which have many legal powers. It is through these various agencies that the government discharge its functions. So, when a traffic inspector checks if a driver is carrying a valid license, it is a legal procedure. 
In the absence of laws, legal power, the government cannot enforce its laws. The judiciary is an important organ of the government. Its main duty is to defend the laws made by the government. If people or public offices violate a law, this can be punished by the judiciary. For example, if there is any discrimination in employment on the basis of caste, religion, sex, etc., the victim can take the matter to court for justice. The court will administer justice by providing compensation to the victim and by punishing the guilty. Categories of Government There are two categories of government, centralized and decentralized. Centralized governments keep tight control over government power. These types of government include monarchy, dictatorship, authoritarian rule, etc. On the other hand, in decentralized type of government, power is shared with others like a village, grassroots level, to a state government, to the center. This is a structure with each level having its own powers and functions. This type of structure is typical of democracy. In a democracy, people elect their representatives by vote. A democratic government is ultimately accountable to the people. Government has to work according to the will of majority of voters. A government that fails to do so can lose the confidence of the people and be thrown out of power in the next elections. In a democracy, people rule indirectly. Democratic and Authoritarian Government A democratic government means a government of the people, by the people and for the people. A democratic government is that form of government in which the people rule themselves through their representatives. It is based on three basic principles, individual rights, equality and liberty. In a democratic form of government, every citizen has the right to participate in the process of government. Public offices are open to all. It includes an ideal social system aimed at social welfare through the fullest development of the human being. In this type of system, everyone is equal before law. Everyone enjoys equal rights, duties and opportunities. No discrimination is made among citizens. All citizens enjoy freedom of expression. An authoritarian government is one that is based on force and not on people's choice. Another name for authoritarian government is dictatorship, in which people have no share in the process of government. Such government does not accept the principles of political equality or freedom of expression. People do not have any say in the formation of government. All activities in the country are controlled by the central authority. The government has unlimited power. The central authority possesses absolute sovereignty and exercises its power as it wishes. But this type of government has some advantages. It is said to be efficient and capable of taking quick decisions. It is also said to provide strong and stable government. But such justifications ignore the fact that the common people have no say in day-to-day -day government. They have no power to decide how to live their lives. Do you know? Prime Minister is the real head of central government and Chief Minister is the real head of state government. Democratic Governments In a democracy, it is the people who have the right to elect their representatives. Only adults, male or female, who have attained the age of 18 years, have the right to vote in these elections. If the voters elect able persons as their representatives, the government functions well. Democratic government, however, is the government of the people. If the voters select good representatives, the government will function well. If the selected representatives are corrupt or incompetent, the government will be corrupt and inefficient. A democratic government functions well if the citizens are aware of their rights and duties. Citizens have to be vigilant in a democracy. They often have to take important decisions. If they possess adequate knowledge of the problems of their country or region, they can take correct decisions. Therefore, 
Citizens should keep themselves up to date through newspapers, radio, televisions, public meetings and other media. In a democracy, every citizen has the freedom to express his views wherein he would want that others should understand his viewpoints. Likewise, he should understand that others also want that he should understand their viewpoints. Even the views of an opponent should be heard patiently. In a good democracy, the views of the opposition are treated with respect. Citizens have the right to consider the working of the government and to criticize it for its mistakes. They have the right to oppose the policies of their government if they do not approve of these policies. But in doing so, they should follow lawful and peaceful methods. Representative democracy. In democratic government people elect their representatives who work on behalf of the people. Political parties put up candidates for election. Our country is an example of a representative democracy. The parties explain their programs to the voters. Political parties play a very important part in a democracy. They work as a link between the masses and the government. They organize public opinion. On various issues of public interest, they support or oppose measures taken by the existing government. Often, there are independent candidates who fight elections on their own. The representatives elected by the people form the legislature. The political party which wins a majority of seats in the legislature forms the government. Thus, representative democracy in one sense means rule of the majority. Representatives belonging to other political parties, being in the minority, form the opposition in the legislature. Sometimes, when no single political party is in the majority, one or more of the contesting political parties join hands to form the government. This alliance is called a coalition government. There can also be situation where the party getting the largest number of seats, though not. Majority of seats forms the government with the support of other political parties and independent members. Majority rule does not mean ignoring the views of minority. In India, before independence, a small minority was allowed to vote. Several national leaders condemned this practice and demanded that every adult should have equal right to vote. This is the basic principle of a representative democracy. It is known as universal adult franchise. A democracy is successful only when all the citizens have the right to vote. Keywords Government, an organization or agency through which a political system exercises its authority, regulates public policy and administers its subjects. Democracy, a form of government in which the ultimate power rests with citizens. Dictatorship, a form of government where absolute authority rests with one individual. Monarchy, the form of government in which the ultimate authority rests with the king or the queen. Universal adult, a democratic process according to which every adult citizen of the country has. Franchise, the right to vote. Let's revise. Continuous review. Society is an organization in which many people live together. In India there is a democratic form of government. India has common borders with many neighboring countries. In a democracy, people elect their representatives by vote. Democracy has three basic principles, equality, liberty and individual rights. An authoritarian government is one which is one based on force and not on people's choice. The basic principle of a representative democracy is known as universal adult franchise. Like, share and subscribe.